So how did you like Rwanda? How did you like my co-host? I would uh, like to also talk, before we end this tonight, first of all, thank everybody here on the staff of the Guggenheim, including one of our producers who was with us in Rwanda, Marjorie Riker. Uh, amazing job that she did to put this together here tonight. And, uh, and also would like now to invite His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Rwanda, up on stage to answer some of your questions. <laughs> Mr. President. So he is now a champion jet skier, <laughs> among other things. Uh, we'd love to just get right to the questions. If anybody has one, just please raise your hand. Happy to do it. I'm looking. In the back there. Um, hi, I'm Michael Sheldrick. Um I'm Michael Sheldrick from Global Citizen, and, and Excellency, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much for what you're doing. Um, I, I think Rwanda really epitomizes you know, a vision of Africa that the world needs to see, and I know this year you're chair of the African Union, and I would love to hear you know, from you what your priorities are, and you know, at Global Citizen, we're aware it's you know, 100 years since the birth of Nelson Mandela, and it's a period of celebration for many people, and yeah, just how we, how we can help. Yeah. The question was, in 100 years since the birth of Nelson Mandela, and now that you're the president of the African Union, where do you see the future of the continent, and what are you doing, learning the lessons that you learned in Rwanda to apply them elsewhere? Uh, most point, uh, importantly is to most point, important thing is to bring Africa together. Africa currently is 54 countries. Uh, the population going to 1.2 billion people. But in as long as the continent remains uh, divided, fragmented into small nation states, uh, and with so many challenges that we know uh, from uh, history, um, then the, con the, the continent doesn't move uh, as one and doesn't build much on this scale of the size of the population, the size of the economy. Uh, the, the potential is huge, uh, but we, we, we don't want to remain with the potential. We want to realize what the potential provides. And, and that can only be realized by bringing the continent together and people of Africa who share many challenges and opportunities coming together and actually being able to move forward. This is the main, so unity is, is uh, very important. We need unity, we need peace, we need good governance. And uh, the continent is endowed with uh, uh, a lot of resources. Uh, it's the richest uh, continent, if you will, uh, putting all those things together. So. Learning lessons uh, from my own country, Rwanda, uh, uniting people, and the united people having a common purpose and interest in uh, development and prosperity. Uh, you, the, the process is very clear and where Rwanda has wanted to be 
is the same path that Africa uh, can take. Um, so combining what we are doing in Rwanda, or if we look at what we have done in Rwanda, a small country, as you saw, in the heart of the continent, 12 million people with so many challenges. Um, this uh, can also apply uh, to bringing together this big continent and, and a huge population and a lot of resources. But we need to come together, we need to unite, we need to have good governance, we need to find peace uh, and, and stability. Uh, uh, and we have uh, leaders on our continent who uh, can come together for a vision for the whole continent. I think this becomes my priority for this year. I will be uh, the chair uh, person of the African Union. Uh, and there are many on the continent who share uh, these views. Uh, in fact, when you, I, I became the chairman of the African Union, I was also already serving in another capacity, leading a reform process for the continent, uh, almost in the same direction that I have already uh, described. Many, uh, there is a team of uh, men and women uh, with the diverse backgrounds, with the capabilities to think and uh, support uh, the continent uh, uh, to, to come together and, and achieve all this. So this is what takes most of our time and it's about thinking, it's about uh, implementing uh, different policies that have come together and getting the results that we want. You know, Mr. President, when we think about the power of travel and tourism, not everybody knows it's 11% of global GDP. It is staggeringly large. Some would argue probably the largest industry in the world. It's one out of every 10 jobs. But most impressively, one out of every five new jobs is in travel and tourism. And yet the African continent has always suffered because of a lack of proper airlift. Um, you now have an airline. So I guess the question is, when are you coming to New York? Well, soon. I think, uh, I think uh, maybe early or mid next year, we, we, we might have uh, flights from uh, Kigali to, uh, I don't know yet which point, but most likely New York. We may have a direct flight uh, maybe to JFK or uh, to other places as well. Other questions? Right over there. Good evening, Mr. President. My name is Alan Feldstein. I'm the owner of Infinite Safari Adventures, a tour operator that brings a lot of people to your country. In fact, I had the honor of meeting you at Quita and Zena last year, um, where I was a guest. I have two questions for you. Number one is, um, what more can we do as Americans besides bringing tourists to assist Rwanda? And my second question is, if I could get you a U.S. birth certificate, would you consider being president of our country for a while? <laughs> I'll, I'll, uh, okay. I'll repeat the question, because I love the question. The question, Mr. President, was, uh, if somehow we could get you a U.S. birth certificate, would you be considering being president of this country? <laughs> well, I think that's why I didn't hear it properly. It's because, uh, it's, it's because that is... Uh, uh, that's another complicated issue. We, we, we have uh, enough problems in our own part of the world to deal with, so uh, I, let me first deal with that. Uh, and there's your answer? Yeah, but the first uh, question, yes, already that's good enough. Uh, if you are bringing tourists to Rwanda or to Africa, that's, that's, a, that's a big thing. I thank you for, for that. We can maybe keep increasing the numbers. But beyond um, tourism, uh, there are all kinds 
of other investments that uh, can be brought to, to Rwanda or to Africa. We want to see the volume of trade increase between uh, Rwanda, or Africa, and the United States. We want to see more investments in different key areas that matter to our continent, in infrastructure, and power sector, technology, and all, all, all kinds of stuff. So there are quite a number of opportunities in Africa where uh, American companies uh, or investors would uh, have uh, a lot of interest. Another question, please. Yes. Oh, right there in the back. And right there, if we get a microphone to you. Is there a microphone coming? Hi, Peter. Okay, good. Go ahead. Hello, can you hear me? We can. Um, Mr. President, my name is Gary Krantz, and uh, I'm an owner of a company that produces uh, radio and television programming here in the United States and around the world, and uh, a new friend of Peter Greenberg. Um, what role did, uh, uh, did the media uh, and the press play in, in the uh, renaissance of your country and uh, uniting the country? forward? Um, when you look, we look at the history, uh, and especially the history around the genocide, uh, I think the media uh, might have done more harm than good. Uh, especially during that period the genocide was taking place. But there was some good in a sense that while well, they were talking about uh, a tragedy happening and highlighting it even though uh, the description of it um, uh, was uh, uh, mistaken and hugely misrepresented. But at least, nonetheless, they talked about it. So people became aware there was uh, a huge uh, tragedy unfolding. Uh, they were giving it uh, all kinds of facts and wrong facts as to the cause and sometimes as to exactly what was happening and, and probably the remedy to, to, to that. Uh, so highlighting that and letting people know, the world know that there was a tragedy in Rwanda happening, that one the media helped, did, uh, in misrepresenting what was happening or uh, apportioning responsibilities. Uh, I, I think there was uh, a lot of damage uh, done. But in my view, and maybe that's the view of many in Rwanda, and that's how we probably managed to overcome that. We, we, we didn't want to spend, even now, we don't want to spend much time talking about the failures of the international community or this and that. We, 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 it just may take a lot of energy for nothing. We know what happened, we know what caused it, we, it's a terrible situation, but above all, we've got to get out of this and live uh, for a better future and work towards that, and that's what we have tried to do in Rwanda. There is uh, lots of uh, uh, kinds of blames to be passed to different people who had responsibility, but I don't think that's where we spend much time. We, we spend much time drawing lessons from this tragedy and working to prevent it uh, in the future or stopping it occurring uh, anywhere else, and, and we, we, we want to develop our country. Although I think you would agree that the famous quote, if you can't remember the past, you're doomed to repeat it. So you do have to remember the past. We do, we do. That's why I said we do by learning lessons. Learning lessons, one of them is uh, to make sure that you keep uh, 
uh, what happened in mind and you have the memory, but you don't get stuck there, you, you move on. We've got time for two more questions. If we've got them, we'll go. Right back there, I think, the microphone's coming to you. Hi, I'm Jennifer Hawkins, and I am very honored to be here, Mr. President and Peter. You are wonderful in your self-effacing uh, <laughs> portrayal. Um, and I work with Wilderness Safaris, and we had the honor of helping launch the Basadi Lodges. But one of the things that I, in studying Rwanda, and you mentioned it in the program, is the day of service, the Umuganda, is that how to say it? And if you could just explain a little bit about that, because I think it's such a beautiful story of how your, your country came together in, in its transformation and how that has been instituted and um, affected the, the sort of spirit of the country. And also, do you participate? Okay. She would like you to describe the umagama, the, the cleaning, yeah. and of course the most important question, I know the answer, but do you also participate? Yes. Well, first of all, our philosophy, the, the, the way we try to do things in Rwanda is uh, to enable our citizens uh, uh, do what they can for themselves to uplift themselves, you know, leave poverty behind us, conflicts, insecurity. But this comes from making sure we do for ourselves and working with others the, the best we can uh, to, to, to move forward. And it's not anymore for us uh, a question of survival. We are not trying to survive. We are trying to live. And living uh, has uh, standards. We want to live a uh, good life. We want every citizen to enjoy that. Uh, and here there are many things we can do uh, for ourselves we, that we have uh, within us all that is required to, to be able to achieve that. There are other things we need partners who want to work with other people. There are lots of resources, uh, a lot of things they can bring to this process for us to be able to, to, to advance. Now, talking about some of the things we can do for ourselves, I remember when this process of Muganda was starting, we were asking that there are things we may not do by ourselves and need support, need donors, and so on. But we ask ourselves whether we needed donors uh, to help with uh, keeping our homesteads, our cities, uh, uh, different places uh, clean. Even from that standpoint of environment, having a clean environment. Uh, it's not uh, going to take a lot of resources to begin with. It takes the will of people to try and do for themselves. For example, when we banned uh, plastic bags, plastic bags so that our environment is not polluted with, with these plastic bags, it just took a decision to ban them, but at the same time around that, having a conversation of introducing the alternatives. Uh, introducing the alternatives to plastic bags became an industry, a business in itself, but we are getting rid of uh, these pollutants uh, in, in our environment. But it, it just takes a decision. Doesn't require additional uh, dollar to, to getting it done. Uh, so cleaning the environment and then bringing people together to understand that it actually it is good for all of us and therefore we can start by doing it ourselves. Uh, you can see you achieve uh, another thing, the change of uh, mentality that 
there are certain things we can do and they will be helpful, adding to what else we are trying to, to do, even if we are to wait for support, but we need to get started. This is really how Umuganda started. Yes, all of us, uh, when we are available, when we are, it's every month, every Saturday that ends the month, and we've done it now for close, I think it must be 14 years now, and uh, it has self you know, drive, people are motivated to do it. You, you don't need to push anybody and everybody uh, turns up and we all, and then after cleaning we have a discussion about uh, uh, what is the communities may be interested in in different parts of our country and we start like seven in the morning, we end it at 10 and then uh, we have another extra hour to talk about the different community challenges and how we can have them addressed. And we have found a huge boost in the developments in our country around that. And it brings the communities together. Absolutely, it unifies. It brings together the, the, the country in a very fundamental way. Before I get to the last question, I just want to recognize one person in the audience, the former Prime Minister of Haiti, Laurent Lamont. And Laurent was instrumental in putting this show together. He, he arranged our meeting in Kigali, and strangely, the president said yes. And here we are. Last question. Yes, right there. We got a microphone coming to you. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. President. Good evening, everyone. Could you speak up just a little louder? Yes, I have such a great proud of seeing my ex prime minister sitting next to the president. And I'm from Haiti, I'm a senator from uh, Haiti. I would like to know what role can agriculture play from taking a country from that side of misery to the other side of prosperity. And if you can bring us that message exactly to Haiti and how to make it happen. If I heard you correctly, it's what message do you want to give to Haiti? How to make... Ah, what role did agriculture play in the transformation of Rwanda? Yes, um, agriculture plays a big role. Uh, in fact, um, historically our country has been uh, involved uh, with agriculture, but uh, subsistence agriculture, it hasn't uh, been benefiting much uh, our economy and our people. But what we have tried to do is now to modernize that agriculture. We have uh, irrigation, we have uh, to apply different technologies uh, for uh, productivity of agriculture, improved productivity, uh, and many things around that. Now what we have discovered in fact, in the whole history of our country, we didn't uh, register any positive growth uh, to, to, to our economy in agriculture um, until uh, maybe 2005 or seven. Before that, there wasn't much uh, in agriculture. It was in the negative. But today, uh, having concentrated on that and uh, of course, our country is small. We have uh, our farmers with small pieces of land. So what we have tried to do is to encourage them to consolidate the land they have and form the cooperatives so that they become more productive with the bigger pieces of land uh, they may have. Uh, but you have registered uh, uh, food uh, security, food self-sufficiency in the last 10 years, uh, like never before. Uh, so agriculture has uh, been very beneficial to, 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 to our people. They get incomes from that, and we are investing now in uh, agro-industries. Uh, farmers are getting more money from uh, 
what they produce. Rwanda was producing uh, and exporting coffee and tea, the best you can find anywhere in this world. But it wasn't, well, these were not benefiting the farmers initially, but now, after realizing the benefits, uh, they, they, they are growing more and uh, uh, we see even a better quality uh, in what we produce. So agriculture is a big thing, not only for every individual country in this way of uh, contributing to the economy, it's uh, where we get food and if we can have food for our people and have extra to export, then that's a good thing. I'm sure Haiti may benefit from that like any other country would benefit. If I can ask everybody, yes, thank you. And if I can ask your, your uh, indulgence here, uh, when we get up, just please remain seated until the president and his party leaves the auditorium. I'd like to thank President Kagame for coming to New York just for this. And once again, the show premieres on public television stations around the country starting Day after tomorrow on Thursday, the 26th. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you all for coming.